Oh, okay. you. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to prepare you. I'm going to give you a fire hose of information. Um, but the links to everything are at the end. And the links to the slides and all the links are actually in the slides as well. So um, when Nathan asked me to do something here, I'm thinking, um, I'm going to do something on proposals because it's actually something I don't like doing. So uh, I'm like, I know there's other people out there just like me. Um, well, who am I? Uh, he kind of went over my bro um, bio. I'm the co-owner of Adcock Creative Group. My husband and I uh, work in our business together. Um, I've been a full-time freelancer for eight years because we were laid off together. We worked at a church in Mobile, a large church in Mobile, Alabama, and we were laid off in 2010. Uh, we expected one of us to get laid off, but not both of us. Um, so we just decided, let's try freelancing because nobody was hiring then anyway. Uh, I'm a former art teacher and a former IT director. And those sound very polar opposites. But if you think about it, web design is kind of like right in the middle. Um, I've been a speaker and I have, there's my email address. But I'm going to talk a little bit about that, that left brain, right brain thing. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, right brain, the creative side, uh, you know, you think of artists, you know, think squirrel, you know, they're always, their brain is like uh, trying to nail popcorn to the wall. Um, and then you have the analytical side. Well, I've done many, many of the light, left brain, right brain tests. I'm exactly in the middle. I am 51% right brained, 49% left brain. So web design is the perfect job for me. Um, what are we going to go over in this? short amount of time is on proposals is who, what, when, how, why, and where. Okay, now not necessarily in that order. There are going to be some who's, what's, why's all over the place. But uh, why? Why am I doing this? Because I hate writing proposals. I'd avoid it for as long as possible. I'd put it off, I'd put it off, I'd put it off. Or I'd spend hours on them trying to make them exactly perfect. One thing Nathan Ingram taught me as my business coach is done is better than perfect. Um, yes? Pardon me? Your other mic. Okay. <laughs> um, that's better. Okay. Um, I wanted to automate and expedite the process because I didn't like doing it, so I wanted to find a way to make it faster. And I did that with, with templates and questionnaires. I'm gonna share what I've learned about writing proposals. Okay, who gets a proposal, first of all? Not everybody. You have to pass a test before I'll even write a proposal for you, because I'm not going to waste my time writing for a, a proposal for somebody who can't afford me or, uh, um, when somebody already has somebody else and they're just looking to fill the, I have to get three proposals. Um, and I can pretty much figure out who those people are. Uh, okay, who gets them? I qualify my clients. I have a scorecard. I score them on their budget. I score them on their project. And I score them on their respect. Are they going to respect my processes? When you're talking to them the first time, you can get that gut feeling about that client who's going to be the PETA client, the pain in the ass client. Um, now, you may, be, you may need the money. Well, then that way you know that, uh, okay, they've got a really good budget and it's a really interesting project. They're gonna score low on the respect, but then you can build those fences to contain that, that uh, renegade client. Um, the first time they hear a price should not be in your proposal. You don't wanna give them sticker shock. Um, what is a proposal? It's not a quote. A quote is just a piece of paper with a price on it. It may have a list of items. That's not a, what a proposal is. A quote is like an invoice where a proposal positions you as an expert and a problem solver. You've listened to what they need and you're presenting a solution to their problem. And it also presents that you're giving them value, not just, you're not just the person that's doing the coding. That's the difference between just hiring a, a developer who's just gonna build it exactly the way you say it and somebody who's actually going to build a website that works for them. Okay, what not to include? 
avoid the technical terms. I did this a lot at the beginning. I'm going to install this plugin. I'm going to install Yoast SEO plugin, and I'm going to um, do your on-page uh, SEO. And uh, they don't know what a plugin is. They don't know what Yoast is. Uh, I'd say 97% of them don't even know what SEO is, so you have to explain it to them. Instead, you're going to do on-page search engine optimization so it will make it easier for Google to find their website. That makes more sense to them than getting all technical. Don't list plugins by name. You don't want to fence yourself in. I'm going to use the all-in-one events calendar, yada, 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 and then you find down the road you find a plugin that works better. You don't want to fence yourself in unless they specifically ask you. They come to you and say, I want you to install WooCommerce on my website and configure it for drop shipping. Then I would get specific. Um, and don't itemize cost. If you're one of those people who charge by the hour, first of all, stop charging by the hour. Second of all, don't list it because that gives them the ability to take a red pencil and mark that out. Well, I can get this website down to $2,000 if I mark all this other stuff off. Well, yeah, they've got a theme and they've got their stuff, but they have no functionality. So uh, if you do value-based pricing, then you don't give them the ability to, to lower the price. You can always lower the price by um, removing value, removing functionality, but you don't just lower the price because they ask for it. Um, what to conclude? This is what I include. Now, obviously, this is me. This is my opinion. This is what I include on my website proposals. And I'm going to uh, kind of itemize each one of these on the way down. I give a business snapshot. That is basically, I'm telling the, the client exactly what they told me about their business. I want to, I, it shows that I'm listening to them on the phone call or in the meeting. I know exactly what their business is and why they need a new website. Business seeds, why do they need a new website? What problems are you trying to solve? Who is the website for? Because the website is not for the owner. The website is for the audience. So what are we going to provide to the audience? Who is the audience? Are they young men, uh, 25 to 35? Are they young families looking for a church? Are they an 80-year-old person looking for a retirement community? You're, you're actually building the website for them, and you may have multiple people that you're building for, uh, so you need to list that out. Um, what's the scope of work? What are you going to do? You need to list out exactly what you're going to do so they can't keep asking for more. Because you can say, well, that's not in our original scope, but we can quote at, quote, give you a separate quote at the end of, the, of this project, and we can make that phase two. Uh, investment, because they're making a financial investment in their website. So, and then I have investment in fees. Fees were, are the optional things. Website care plan, website hosting. Uh, additional things that I'm going to offer them that they can up, upgrade to. Um, your process. Let them know how you do your job. Don't just say, you don't just disappear for two months and then come back and say, here's your website. Let them know what the process is. And then the contract. If you weren't in the um, session yesterday um, on the liability, uh, make sure you look it up on WordPress TV because you need a contract. Um, how? Let the clients write it. If you ask the right questions in that client interview, you can whip out a proposal in 20 minutes because they're going to give you all the answers to write that proposal. Um, I set up templates. I do a lot of church websites. I do a lot of ministry websites. Um, I do retirement community websites. I do other websites, but I have templates for those. And I have a template that has everything I can possibly think of. So when I'm doing, I did a um, proposal on Tuesday for a church down in Florida. It took me, I actually timed myself. It took me seven minutes. Seven minutes to write this proposal because I had a template for churches. I did a retirement community a couple weeks ago. It took me about 15 minutes to write that whole proposal. And we're talking a multi-page proposal. Looks super professional. Um, website worksheets. Go, go to my website and look at my website wor worksheet. It's under getting started, or it's under web design. I just reorganized. Um, it'll, all my pages kind of link to that. I actually have a separate one for churches and a separate one for retirement communities that ask all the questions I need to write the proposal. 
and to understand their project. Uh, sell a discovery session. If they want you to come in person, they should pay you for that um, opportunity. Uh, the re last retirement, the job I got that I'm starting next week, the $23,000 plus job, uh, they actually paid me for three hours of my time to drive to Atlanta and have a meeting with all the he marketing heads of all the re different retirement communities in this network so I could ask them all the different questions about their communities because I've only been to two of their 11 communities and I wasn't going to drive all over the state to look at them when we could get everybody together in Atlanta. And that price will actually be credited towards their uh, final invoice. Um, only write a proposal if you have a chance. Again, ask what their budget first. Usually the fir one of the first three questions, what's your budget? If they say, well, I don't know, um, or uh, I don't have a budget, then I always say, well, so you have an unlimited budget, we can really you know, make a spectacular website. They'll eventually, they'll immediately, oh, no, 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 I'm thinking about $3,000. Um, I'm thinking about $5,000. Uh, I put that on my um, uh, website worksheet, and I actually get really good answers. Sometimes I get the 500, and I just, I'm nice. I'll call them or email them saying, you know, yeah, that's not my price range. My prices are, and I have it on my website. My websites start usually at X amount of dollars. Um, get a verbal okay for before you write a proposal. That's my closing question. Okay, I'm thinking in the ballpark that your website's going to cost somewhere between 4,800 and 5,500. Um, dollars, but I need the answer to this question before I can actually write this proposal. That was the one on Tuesday because I needed an answer to a question about their church management software. And uh, if you get me that answer, then I can finalize the number and get you a proposal um, within 24 hours of getting that answer. Um, so, and they're like, oh, excellent, you know, that's perfect, that fits right in with what what we want, and so now I know I pretty much have the job. I just have to uh, get the proposal signed. Now here's kind of an example of a business snapshot. Um, this is from one of my retirement community template. Um, the name, I put the things whenever I put the name in the community, I put it in bold so I don't actually leave one out. Um, name of community offers an energetic, carefree, and independent retirement lifestyle enhanced by unrivaled, unrivaled slate of first-class amenities, activities, and cultural offerings. Um, I got that from their w current website. Uh, uh, it's a premier continuing care retirement community pr providing a full range to its services. They need an upd updated website that functions as a powerful marketing and communications tool because it's a really, really old website. Uh, and it doesn't represent the fact that they're an outstanding senior community in the Atlanta area. So it, it provides a go-to source. I'm telling them what this new website's going to provide for them. Okay, business needs. Now this is just the last four bullets in that business. The business needs on this one was like this, this big. So depict it is a, pre, uh, a premium community. Present the amenities. Um, highlight the high level of service. Um, uh, presented as a sustainable brand and that is a sustainable because a lot of um, like nursing homes and things they pop up and then they get built and then they immediately get sold um, when it becomes like a not a profitable thing so I this one has a long history we want to show that this has been this is an established community another target audience needs now that one's another long list I just did the bottom ones they need, the target audience need access to information about the services because they offer personal care, assisted living, skilled nursing, home, home care, memory care, and rehabilitation services. Uh, they, you want success stories and uh, resident testimonials. Uh, you want to uh, highlight the, all the great features. This is an awesome community. I mean, I would like to live there right now. It's an awesome community. Um, and uh, so I'm telling what the audience is. For like retirement communities, you have a vast audience. You have the 80, 90 year old. You have their kids, which might be in their 50s and 60s. You have their grandkids. So you're, you're doing every kind of marketing imaginable. You're still doing newspaper ads and direct mail. You're doing email marketing. 
you're doing uh, Google ads and Facebook ads and remarketing there. Um, you're doing the whole gamut of possible um, marketing for retirement communities because you're marketing to them, their kids, and their grandkids. Okay, the scope of work, again, very short list for a very long list. Um, this is how I would word things. I email sign up system to encourage members and visitors to sign up to receive updates. Notice I'm not saying install constant contact or MailChimp plugin and they don't know what that means. Install and figure an event system uh, for the internal residents as well as the marketing things uh, that they put on to get new residents in. Build a resident story section. Uh, build and doc a document repository where people can go and download forms. Um, install and configure form systems for online form submissions. And I'm going to rebuild all the existing forms on the website. Install and configure a transactional email system. This is one of those things that they asked for because they were not having reliable email delivery of online form submissions in their current website. So we're going to set up a transactional email system like Mailgun or SendGrid to make sure that all the emails are delivered. Um, project timeline and process. Outline your workflow. Let them know how you work because you're gonna have to bring them in in certain sections. Um, no code before deposit is received or content is received. Now there are little exceptions, I'll explain that. Phase one is design. If we're doing a logo, I don't need all your content for your website to do your logo. I just need the information enough to do the logo. But I always say, okay, we're gonna start with your logo. We don't need content now. You have two weeks, because your, your logo, we'll probably have your logo finalized in two weeks. You have that much time to get me your content. Because once we have your logo done, we will not proceed until we have all your content. If you can't write that content or can't get it, we can provide you a copywriter. Now it's going to be X amount of dollars. Are you interested in me quoting you know, a copywriter? So I'm, I'm asking, do you want a copywriter? Do you want to see a quote for a copywriter? Um, so we can do that content and get this project out even faster. And then once we have all the content, we have their logo, we have their content, we have all their information, we start development. Now, depending on the size of the site, it can take as little as a couple days to build, which we don't say we're done in two days. We usually wait until like a week, week and a half, and uh, um, say that we're done. All the way up to a website, I just finished a project because it was committee driven, took nine months. Um, it was a big website. Um, it was like 200 and some pages, but uh, it just kind of drug on and drug on and drug on, but it was a lot of, and then comes the revisions, and we spent at least a month on revisions. Uh, and then launch, I actually you know, have a process for launch as well. And then phase five is the training. You gotta train your clients how to use their website. If you haven't heard of WP 101 or video user manual, get one or the other because you can put videos in the back end of your website, in the dashboard of your website, to show your clients how to use their website. I use video user manuals. I'm a member of WP Elevation, and I get that as part of, it's by WP Elevation. I get a part of it, uh, access to that because I'm a member there, but you can buy it separately. But I can put custom videos in the back end of my website very easily. You can with WP 101 as well. Um, but it has the page builder, so I use Beaver Builder to build my websites. It actually has videos already made for Gravity Forms, Yoast SEO, WooCommerce, and Page Builder, Beaver Builder, already built into their system, so I don't have to record those. I only have to record the videos of the things that are specific to their website that I can put in the back end. I walk them through, I train them, I show them where the videos are, and I tell them, you know, if it takes more than 20 minutes to figure something out and you still don't get it, you know, contact me if they're on a care plan. Uh, and I will uh, either do a quick video, walk them through it again, or get on the phone with them. They have 30 days to basically get to learn their website for tweaks. I give them 30 days of kind of tweaks and help hand-holding before either a care plan kicks in or they're off and then they have to pay for extra time. Um, I ask for referrals. Make sure I ask, at that time I ask for uh, uh, testimonials that I can put on my website. Okay, a contract. Now, I started out with a re no contract, and then I started using the one provided by WP Elevation and kind of tweaked it. 
And then as I'm going along, I started adding more and more and more. And every time I get a problem client or something that comes up, I add it to my contract. So my list has really grown. And this is not everything on my contract, but uh, you'll have a copy of it if you download uh, my sample proposal. But it talks about time frames. It basically says, you don't, if you don't give me what I need, I can't, I can't meet my timeline that I've laid out in this proposal. Um, suspended and abandoned projects. You have that client that doesn't exactly answer your emails maybe a week or so later, you, you, know, you hear crickets for a while. I, I have a suspended, okay, I haven't heard from you in 30 days. I've called you and left messages, I've emailed, I haven't heard from you in 30 days. I'm taking your website down uh, from public view or from the dev view, um, and you have to pay me the second half for me to pick up your project again and put it back in my workflow. You may pay me, but it's gonna go at the end of my line because if you're not working on your project, I'm moving on to the next project. Uh, abandoned projects, I don't hear from you in 20 days, we start the process all over again. You don't get credit for what you're, you deposited, we start the process all over again, we, you get a brand new proposal. Um, I've never had to do that, they usually just kinda die and go away, and I never hear from them again. But I've got their, at least got their deposit, um, and uh, I've taken their website down. It's funny, because I have one, I have a website that's not live, that's literally four years old. But I take, it, I take it down off the dev server, and I, that's when I get an email back. So, <laughs> oh, you've taken it down, what happened to it? Oh, you haven't paid me, the site's live. I said, I'm not putting this last time, I'm not putting it back up until I you know, get paid for it. Um, and it was a pre-WP elevation project, that's how old it is. Actually, that would make it like five years old. Um, and uh, it's a great website, I'd love it for my portfolio, but uh, it was an 85-year-old lady who raises rabbits for food, uh, you know, for restaurants. Uh, and I think she wanted a website just to sell her business. Um, go over uh, late payments. Go over um, uh, what you do to collect. Uh, out of scope additions. If it's not in the proposal, it's out of scope. Uh, refunds, I don't give them. It says that. Um, termination, I can fire you. If you're being a big old jerk, you can fire me, but you're not getting your money back. You know, see refunds. <laughs> Uh, compatibility, define what a bug is. Just because the event system doesn't work the way they thought it was going to doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. It's just, a bug is something that's, you know, it's throwing an error, it's not working. That's a bug. Um, just because it doesn't work the way they expected it doesn't mean it's not a bug. Changes after launch, what are you gonna cover in that 30 days, that grace period? Doesn't mean I'm going to install WooCommerce because you know now I get 30 days of free stuff. I actually outline what it is. Really include this third-party images. I have this conversation when we talk. Do you have images for your website? No, but I'm going to get them. Do not Google images and steal them off Google. That is called sniping. It is illegal. You will eventually get caught, and if you get, it happens to be a Getty image, they're going to ask for a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars per image. They don't do a cease and desist letter; they send you a bill. If you want us to provide you stock images, we do that. We do one stock image per page. It's ten dollars per image after that, and so on. Um, if you don't have your images right away, or you're going to hire a photographer, I'm going to build the website with some stock images so you can get an idea of what kind of images we need. Uh, but do, I, I said that over and over, do not steal, do not Google images. You can get free um, images off of Unsplash, Pexels. Um, if you, uh, Deposit Photos has great sales about every other month for 100 images for $100. And they have pretty good images and some of those same images are on Getty Images on iStock Photo. I have a subscription for iStock Photo, so that's where most of my images come from. I have an account with Deposit as well. That's where I get my images. So my clients are getting images that have the right to use. Um, what's your terms of use? Can they take your design and use it on another website? No. 
um, that said who owns what, the intellectual property, talks about that WordPress is open source. They're not, they don't own the code. Uh, plugins and licenses. If you're on a care plan for me, all the premium licenses that I've used to build your website are included. The renewal fees are included in your care plan. However, if you're not on a care plan, I'm going to give you a list of all the licenses you have to buy after launch because I'm going to be removing my licenses and you have to buy your own. And that's another incentive for them to be on a care plan. Website security. Outline what you're going to do to protect their website. You're going to install a word, you know, a, um, a security uh, system like WordFence, or and you talk to them and tell them, you know, you're, they're going to be getting emails from their website that talks about security, that their plugins need to be updated, uh, and all that stuff that you're going to handle in training. Um, website updates. That they're, who's going to be responsible for the website updates? You're on a care plan. I'm going to take care of that for you. If you're on it, you're going, it's up to you to do it. If you do not subscribe to one of our care plans, it is your responsibility to make sure your website stays updated. And it's not our responsibility if it gets hacked. Backups. Now, like I mentioned yesterday, every client I've ever had, I have an automated backup. If they're not a care plan client, they get uh, an automated backup to my Amazon. I keep like a monthly backup for each website and it has saved a client or two and they've been very grateful. It took me five minutes maybe to set up, but I want that insurance back there so because if something happens to their website, I'm going to be the first person. Well, you were on a care plan. I'm sorry, you know, you're SOL. Sorry, you weren't, you know. Well, look, I have a backup from last month of your website. It's going to take me two hours to probably uh, reinstall it and uh, get it back up and we got to make sure that that back backup doesn't have any malware on it. Uh, we'll get it back up and it's going to be $150 an hour uh, paid up front before I do it. So uh, um, and then I try to talk them in if they're not going to be on a care plan at least you know get Securi or some other uh, system that will guarantee clean up for them. It outlines my care plans. Okay, for $99, you're going to get this. For $299, you're going to get this. For $499 and up, you're going to get this. You know, anything beyond that, multiple websites, you know, we can discuss that as a separate proposal. Uh, third party services. When that marketing company uh, goes in there and messes up the website because they put in the tracking pixel wrong or in the wrong place, uh, if you have to go in and fix something that somebody else has messed up, they have to pay for it. Um, the choice of forum. Very important. If somebody decides to sue you, because you know you can work for them anywhere, uh, for any client uh, all over the country, if they decide to sue you, for instance, they, somebody decides to sue me, they have to come to Coweta County, Georgia to do it. I'm not traveling to settle a lawsuit. So put your choice of forum in there, the county and the, and the area of where you live, so they have to, they have to make the effort to come there. Um, your liability, what are you liable for on the website? Um, talk about GDPR um, and the privacy policies, uh, your terms and conditions. And I have some, I kind of ran out of space, so I kind of stopped right there. But um, there's, you're going to get a copy, you're going to see. And the best way is you have to go take, get a contract ready, what you think is a good contract, then go to a lawyer. Don't go to a lawyer and say, I need a contract. Give them one and let them edit it. It'll be a lot cheaper, a lot less time, and they can actually change the wording to match your state. So the one you're going to see on my download is the one I had from Florida. Uh, I just moved back like four months ago to Georgia. So I haven't met with an attorney in Georgia yet, so I'm going to have to take it um, and meet with an attorney and have them kind of tweak it uh, for Georgia. And all I did was go in and change the forum from Florida to, to Georgia. So that's my update on it so far. Um, and uh, guide the client. If they're really a newbie, get on the phone and walk them through the contract. That, to me, that's optional. Nathan does that in person for every client. Um, I don't do it for every client, but I kind of get a gut feeling of which ones I need to do it for. 
uh, and again, get the deposit before you do any work. That right brain part of you wants to jump in and be creative and build something. Listen to the left side of your brain and say, show me the money, okay? Uh, get, the, get the money before you do any work. Okay, tools. I'm the shiny object girl, you know. I love tools. Anything, I like to look at tools and find things that make my life easier. Um, if you're just starting out, you don't have a lot of money, hey, there's Word, there's Pages. You set up a template, you use that. Uh, send, send them as a PDF. Do not send them as a Word document or a Pages document. Save it as a PDF. Uh, better proposals. That's my better proposals referral link. That's what I use right now. Um, I got this shiny object uh, from AppSumo. If you're not subscribed to AppSumo, app, A-P-P-S-U-M-O, appsumo.com, go sign up today. They do really, 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 really good specials on software. I got better proposals for $39 lifetime deal two years ago. And uh, I was using BidSketch at the time and I was paying $30 a month for BidSketch. Now, if you think, oh, that's a lot of money, but if you get one $5,000 project a month, $30 a month is not that big of a deal. Both these um, systems, every time the client opens the proposal, you get an email. You get to see how much time they spend on every page. You get to, they get to sign online and agree to it. They can even, on uh, better proposals, pay you the deposit online, right then and there. And it's great, you just look in your email, oh great, I got that job. Um, and that's how the, the retirement community, I knew I was gonna get the job because they had fired the advertising agency they had hired in Atlanta and told me that verbally that they were gonna hire me and I filled out the proposal and uh, I hadn't, he hadn't signed it and he was asking me to like, when were we gonna see designs? And I'm like, well, I haven't got the deposit and I haven't gotten the uh, signed proposal. Oh, I signed it. Um, no, you didn't. I'm looking at it right now, you're not signed. So like in five minutes I had it signed and uh, a note saying that the, the check would be cut on Friday. And I'm like, well, when I get the check, then I'll start. Um, so bid sketch is a lot like it. I found better proposals easier to customize than bid sketch. Um, it's easier to add pages and customize colors and uh, I found bid sketch a little clunky in that. Uh, a friend of mine uses Proposify. I've never used it, never tried it, so, but I know about it. Now, 17 hats is a pretty cool system. It's kind of a CRM proposal contract email thing, um, it was built for photographers, but it, you can use it for web design. Uh, now, it's really expensive, except during Black Friday sales. They, so go and sign up for their emails, um, and then wait until November, and they have a free trial, so go look at it. Um, you can actually set out your whole system of onboarding and everything, and all the emails in this system. Um, I, I looked at it, but uh, I decided to, to do it with uh, better proposals because you know it was $39 lifetime. Uh, but they have a great deal at Black Friday. They've had it the last three years where you get like their ultimate plan with, with your own branding and all this stuff uh, for a, a fraction of their normal price. Um, Plutio is another shiny object I picked up on AppSumo last year. I haven't used it yet. It's kind of a combination of a um, CRM, a client uh, relation manager, and Trello. I, I'm a big Trello fan, I love Trello. Um, so Plutio uh, uh, does that as well, but it doesn't integrate with anything. So I'm holding on to it. I'm waiting for it to integrate with, um, like through Zapier, where I can make it do other things and hook into other things. So I'm holding on to it. I bought it, you know, $39. I'm going to see what it does uh, once they get the integration. And I check for it about every month. And I've asked them to integrate with Zapier. So I'm going to show you a sample proposal. But I put these links in here. So if you download my slides, then you'll have the links to the proposals as well. So I'll let everybody with their cameras finish. 
<laughs> okay. And, uh, um, okay, uh, I'm going to come back to this. Let me uh, go ahead and show you my proposal here. Uh, this is a sample uh, proposal for a retirement community. Let me make it uh, bigger here. So first it talks about the snapshot. It's all in pages. This is, they get a link to this and this is what they see. They can also download it as a PDF. Uh, so this is my template you're actually looking at for my retirement communities. You'll see that it's there. It talks about the snapshot, what I've talked to them about. They go down to uh, the business needs. These are all the needs for that business that they had discussed with me on the phone. I take notes. You can also, if you do Zoom, you can record the call. Just let them know that you're recording it. And then you can take the notes from there. I'm a really fast typist, so I take my notes in Evernote when I'm talking to them. Uh, what the target audience needs are. I usually put those on uh, one page. Sometimes I break it out into two if it's a really long list. Uh, what's the solution? This is everything I'm going to build for them. This is the scope of work that I'm doing for this project. If it's not on this list, I'm not doing it. What's the timeline? It's going to take two weeks for me to come up with the initial design. Um, and then we're going, I'm going to do what the design is. I'm going to do a home page. I'm going to do um, a general inside page. I'm going to do, if it's a ne network of retirement communities, I'm going to do a community page. Um, I'm going to do a service page for whether it's memory care or assisted living. So they can get an idea of what it's going to look like. Once they get the okay and they've signed off on it, we've done all the edits, then the development. Now the development, if it's a small site, may take three weeks. It might take four weeks, five weeks, um, depending on the size of the project. Uh, revisions may take one week, one month. It depends on the project. Uh, and then testing. We test everything. We go in there, we test the mobile responsive. We're testing for accessibility. We're doing all the testing. We're making sure everything's right before it goes live. Making sure we, you know, turn off the test mode on the e-commerce store. <laughs> you know, we have that checklist for everything that we do. And we have a checklist that we go through when, when we do launch. Um, what's their investment? I can actually here on this show that the project's going to be $8,500. But you need good hosting. You're hosting right now on GoDaddy. Well, we're not going to host on GoDaddy. Um, we're going to offer you WP Engine hosting, um, and it's going to be $299 a year. But that's optional. And see, it's got the little optional tag. Business website care plan. I'm going to recommend to you that you need the business website care plan because you need more help than the basic one requires. Uh, so it's going to be $299 a month. And that's optional, but my contract explains uh, what they get for that. Um, so it's a one-off total of $8,500, and then they can actually select whether or not they want those right now. They don't have to select right now, but generally, I'd say 90% of my clients will choose both. And here's my contract. Okay, my master services agreement. It talks about who we are, what we are, who I am, who they are, the project, proposal of services. I'm going to do what's in that list you just saw. I'm not going to do anything else. The time frames only work if you follow and do what you're supposed to do. If you want it rushed, it's going to cost you 45% more if you want it in a hurry. Um, suspended and abandoned projects. It explains what a suspended project is. It explains what an abandoned project is and what happens if that um, we have to invoke that. Um, fees and payments. Um, most of mine, I require a 50% deposit. Big projects that are over $10,000, I usually do 30, 40, 30. And my hourly rate and so on and so on. Refunds, all the things I talked about. See, it goes on and on and on and on. You think this is long. They're not going to read it. Well, this is there to protect them. It says what I'm going to do. It's there to protect you. 
so they don't go crazy. Um, and uh, then the next step is for them to how to proceed. You sign it, you pay me, we get going. Um, and then the last here, let's go ahead and do that. Um, where? I got most of this. I'm, like I said, I'm a member of WP Elevation. They just had an intake and it just closed. Uh, they do three to four a year. Best money I ever spent on my business. Taught me the importance of processes. Having a process for everything. And each process might have sub-processes. Got me very organized. It's easy to do web design when you're doing one project at a time. It's difficult to do that when you have seven projects working at the same time. You've got to have a process for everything. Nathan Ingram, the, or, the lead organizer here, he's my business coach. Um, I can't highly recommend having a coach or some type of support system. I've stayed a member of WP Elevation because I'm a member of a private Facebook group that is my support net. I need a plugin that does this. I can post it in there and I'll have instant replies from people all over the world. If I need help with a piece of code, I post it in there, I have access to help immediately. To me, that is worth the money I, monthly fee I pay. Nathan, on the other hand, helps me dig deep and find the problems in my processes and fix them. That's a more personal one-on-one. -on -one. Um, my website, Adcock Creative Group, you can contact me through there. There's my email address. Um, and there's the link to my slides uh, right there. Um, and if you don't get them or you can't get to, you can always email me and I'll be glad to send them to you. So, okay, let's have questions. Do you send the proposal and the contract at the same time? Yes. Now, some people split them up. I like them all together because I want them to see my process and it explains so much. So, I, I do them all together. Um, uh, I know Nathan does them separately, but he sends them at the same time, but they're separate documents. Yes? Uh, how large is your organization, is your team, and how hands are you, how hands on are you in developing the website? Um, there's three of us. My husband, who's a graphic designer, um, awesome graphic designer, completely right-brained. Um, so uh, getting to him, he's an awesome designer, but he's not a web person. Um, he doesn't have a process. His, his process is piles on his desk. Um, and uh, I have a VA. I have a virtual assistant who's a designer, kind of implementer. Um, sometimes I have him work on designs. We generally, I'll do a design and have him build it. If it's a really small project or like I don't have anything for him to do, I'll say, hey, rebuild this old client site and we'll sell it to them, you know. Uh, so that's what I'm having him do right now. Uh, and uh, so there's only three of us. I'm the lead designer. I'm the lead developer. My hand is on every project. So uh, eventually not. I want to get out of that. I'm going to end my current VA will become the lead designer once we trained him enough. He's young, so he likes all the whiz bang stuff that you you, know, you don't put those on retirement communities, uh, so or churches. Uh, um, and we're training him, you know, what kind of style of websites we want. And eventually, he'll be the pro he's very organized, so he'll become like the lead designer and project manager. And then we'll hire a developer. So we I kind of have a, a plan. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a dev site. If they don't pay me, their site's not going live. Um, uh, when, if they're arrears and web hosting, I've never had a client arrears and web hosting. They, they pay their bills. How do you take their site down? They, I usually, what I do, I don't take it down. I put a um, splash screen up. There's a plug-in for that, a coming soon thing. And I just put it up um, and so nobody can get to the, the website. Well, they haven't paid me. They don't own it. So how do you own your own stuff? Oh, I'm talking about development. They haven't paid their final bill. Oh, okay. okay. So it's not on their They're not on their server. web server. It's no. On her web server. It's on my, my development server. How do you deal with uh, companies that have alternate payment options? Like someone says, well, I can only pay you uh, six to nine days to process an invoice. Um, the retirement community, I know um, that I need to wait for a check for them. Now, 
they're a client of mine, so I know they're good for it. Um, churches also have an internal PO system. I have some clients that require a monthly invoice. So I got this really sh new shiny object from sh <laughs> some apps, AppSumo called Billy, um, which allows me to do the reoccurring invoices because I was terrible at remembering to do the invoices. So I set up for those clients who want just an invoice sent to them every month to, as a reminder to pay me, I set that up and I forget about it. So I mean the checks just come in the mail and it's like yay. Or they pay it because it has a link that they can pay it online. It comes in, I get the email from Stripe, you know, they've paid you uh, $2.99. So. How, how firm are you with it? Are you willing to be flexible? Oh yeah, I'm very flexible. Um, because sometimes you just have to deal with, with what they uh, uh, have to work in. Yes? I agree with the items you have in your contract, but have you ever found that sometimes that just scare off? No. Okay. No. Uh, and and if, it, if some people have asked about specific things, I've clarified, I've gone in and changed the wording on theirs just to make, it, make them feel better. Um, and uh, just to clarify for them and talk it through. That's why for the bigger ones, I like to walk them through and kind of explain. Yes? Yeah, it's um, Billy app. Uh, yeah, I think B I like Billy, a little boy. It's a little boy's face, Billy. Um, yeah, uh, I bought it a couple years ago. Um, so do you use that for your like care plans as well? No, um, I I have a form, a gravity form on my website. So when they sign up for a care plan, I send them the link to the gravity form, and that sets up the subscription in Stripe for them. Um, yes. I got it for $39, um, lifetime. Uh, you can hook it to your business account. I don't do any of that. All I wanted was an, a system that would automatically send invoices. And PayPal doesn't do that. And well, Stripe does it now. So I'm probably, um, oh, by, yeah, Stripe does that now. When I bought Billy, Stripe did not do that. Stripe does that now. So I'm probably just going to be moving them over to Stripe and getting rid of Billy. Mm -hmm. Fresh, yes, I didn't want to pay for FreshBooks. So uh, since Stripe does it, now that I have a system that's going to do that, um, and Stripe just introduced that a couple months ago, so uh, um, I just haven't moved it over. What was the link that you were getting the software from? AppSumo. AppSumo. A-P-P-S-U-M-O. Like sumo wrestler, AppSumo. Um, they send out deals every week. Now, beware. Don't buy everything. Um, uh, some of it sounds, well, this is a really good deal, but it's not a good deal if you're not going to use it. Now, I got a great one last week, and it might still be up. It's called Cloud App. Um, it allows you to do screenshots and animated GIFs from your desktop, and, and it automatically encodes them, uploads them to the cloud, and opens a link on your desktop. So if you need to record a quick screen thing of showing a client how to do something, boom, boom, boom. Within two minutes, it's done. I have a link, and I give it to my client. Loved it. It was, I think it was forty-nine dollars for that one. Awesome. One more question. Yes. Three or four links. The slides earlier had the first two bit links. Links. Yes. Mhm. Mm the top one will send you to the proposal I just showed you. The bottom one is a PDF of the same thing. If you end up not doing it, um, tweet me, email me, I'll give you the links. If you have any questions after that, just email me. And I'll be glad to help you. Thank you so much.